Leaves are falling, autumn is calling. No matter the season, we have a flurry of goals heading your way. Welcome to the J1 League Goal Zone Show. One of Sargon's postponed matches from their bout of COVID infections took place midweek, but it was not their day as Gamba took this one by two goals to one. The weekend then saw Gamba back in action again, travelling to Tokyo this time for their fixture. Another top five contest was in store, Nagoya and Cerezo facing off, while the league leaders were back at home to welcome Sendai. Consadole Sapporo managed to steal a point from their outing last weekend and were presented with a great opportunity to profit against a shonen side that had only won once away all season. Here's Patrick Kinghorn. Matsuda, Saito, decent cross and they get ahead to it and they can and that's a decent effort from Tarek and it's produced a smart save from Nakano. The cross wasn't positioned ideally but he managed to get something on that. It's interesting as well that on the percentage stats still marginally Balmari seeing them more of the ball. They got a chance at goal here, Tarek deflected and just wide. And it'll be a corner, that's the second chance Tarek's had inside the first 12 minutes. Nakano, oh, that was a risky pass from Nakano, and it's gone badly wrong, it's picked up by Barada, and they could be in here, Tarek with the layoff to Matsuda. Referee plays on, it comes out to Kaneko, and it's an absolute screamer! Daiki Kaneko breaks the deadlock 36 minutes in, and Sapporo's defensive frailties rear their ugly head again. Well, it was a first-class strike, but Sapporo only have themselves to blame. Defensive suicide, knocked back by Saito, and given a clear slight at goal with no one closing him down. He was given all the time in the world to pull the trigger and pick the spot perfectly. And Daiki Kianeko, with his first goal of the season, gives Shonan Balmare a lead here. Chested on to Anderson Lopez. He gets it back to Komai. Komai on the dart now. Can he find a ball through the middle? There's plenty of red and black shirts there. If he can find one, this might come to Lucas Fernandez. Off the line by Shonan. And the second phase comes in and deflected. They've equalised. It's a flag up. No, it isn't. It's one each here. And Sapporo finally strike back. Komai with a good darting run. Gets the cross in. It comes out to Lucas Fernandez. His shot is cleared off the line. Now keep an eye on Anderson Lopez here. There's three of them in an offside position. Oh, the players on the line. They're all on side. That's what it was. It's easy to forget the player on the line. It was Tanaka that made the initial stop. And he's inside the goal. Comes back into the field of play. So because he's there, it's not offside. Oh, no. Almost heart in the mouth sometimes watching Sapporo try and play it out from the back like that. It's worked out for them this time though. They're out at the races. There's plenty of pace over on that far side. Kaneko's in business. Anderson Lopez is offside. Kaneko might not need him. Oh, that's some score. A run from just inside his own half, I think it was. Anderson Lopez acting as the perfect decoy. And this is some score. They catch Sean Balmere out of position and chasing back. It's a second goal of the game and a third of the season for Takoro Kaneko. And safe to say, the second one was more impressive than the first. Anderson Lopez, Suga. Finds Kaneko, lovely pull back to Suga for 3-1, squares it, no one there to finish it off to the edge of the area, a chance for Arado! Save Suga, surely Addison Lopez flags up for offside, it won't count. Well, it looked to matter then if just when, not if, Sapporo would get the third, and when they finally find the back of the net, the flag was up correctly, I believe, for offside. Hoisted into the area, Ono's up there. Oh, hit it away by Fukai and that will do it and you can see the relief amongst the Sapporo players they're finally back on the winning trail at home it's finished here Hokkaido Consadale Sapporo 2 Shonan Balmere 1 to the capital now two of the informed teams would be eager to consolidate their table positions where all others had slipped up Tokyo had taken the reverse fixture but it was the visitors Gamba who had been on a hot streak of late here's Shazad Hack with your commentary Oh, 
almost found its way in. Some uh, defensive work there, Patrick. She did just enough to put off Morishige. Hidaguchi, not a bad ball in. Oh, and he was looking in a good position there, Patrick. Oh, the penalty box, the penalty's been pointed out by the referee. Minoru Tojo felt there was a handball. Lots of protests here from the FC Tokyo players. No VAR, just to remind you, of course, for the rest of the season after the restart. Nicely done by Ed Milson. He's given them a 1-0 lead here, the Brazilian. Leandro, and that was close. Looking for that top corner. Looked again, a little close, went for the other side this time. Again, I think Yashiguchi had that covered. Just about two minutes left in this match. Oh, that's a decent effort. Well stopped by Higashiguchi. And that is it. A good win here for Gamba Osaka. Full time score FC Tokyo nil, Gamba Osaka 1. Peter Klamowski's men hadn't found their way out of the bottom since August with the worst defence in the league and only two wins to show for their efforts at home. Shimitsu would be hoping San Frecce had an off day when they came to visit. Here's Mark Richmond. Goes direct for goal and into the back of the net. Nishibe nowhere close. Morishima spanks one and spanks one home. And San Frecce Hiroshima with a glorious start to this game. Well, every time he scored away from home this year, they've ended up winners. And he has scored after 12 minutes. Tsukasa Morishima. Nishimura got away with it. Fortuitous to keep the ball still. Oh, it's brilliantly improvised by Carlinos, who just took a chance. And that very much is the instincts of a striker, isn't it? The ball was behind him, and he made something out of it, almost something out of nothing because he looped it almost over Hayashi. And you'd have to say very good backtracking from the goalkeeper who used all his experience in the world to know that even that sort of deflection might creep in, and it was creeping in. Corner from Nishizawa, drilled in, easily headed away by Higashi, who was protecting the near post with all the jealousy in the world. Nishizawa's uh, done it well enough to free up Chance for Junior Dutra! It's got into the back of the net, and that's the equaliser for Shimitsu Espals. The striker in form with his first strike of the game in front of goal, and he's put it underneath the body of Hayashi. Mistake by the Senfreche Hiroshima goalkeeper, who should have done a lot better. He might have seen it very late, but still, he should have not allowed the ball to slip through his body the way he did. But Shimitsu Espals have found a way right back into this. They take the lead yet again. It's floated right through and it's gone into the back of the net. What a response from San Frecce Hiroshima. Two minutes. Shimitsu has pulse, found that glimmer of hope, and it's just been snuffed out by the substitute Leandro. The team's leading scorer has done it again. Leandro Pereira, his ninth in the league this season, his tenth overall. only in the final 10 minutes of matches uh, and now they have a two-goal deficit to try to make up because Hayao Kawabe has stepped up from the middle of the park and slid the ball under the goalkeeper to make it 3-1 from Senfreche Hiroshima. Walker, great vision from him to spot that run by Okui. Junior Dutra, Musaka, Okui, just hanging it up there! Brave enough, flying header, and his first goal 
since the 10th of October, exactly one year to the day, Yosuke Goto has scored again. Boy, does he love the 10th of October. First goal for a new club, and it took all the guts to fly it inside. It is a familiar story, and a familiar tale here at the IAI Stadium, the Hondaira, for 2020. So often the players have given their all only to fall short and face another defeat. This time by three goals to two as San Freche Hiroshima get the three points from Shizuoka. A stone's throw away and neighbouring Nagoya welcomed Cerezo to their hood. The visitors needed to make up a lot of ground if they were to have any hopes left of a title shot. Inside the first quarter of an hour and Yoichiro Kakitani got himself the right side of the defender, but Langerak was there to get his body in the way. No goals at this point, 10 minutes from the break. Mu Kanazaki rising highest at the far post, but Kim Jin Hyun made it a goalkeeper's first half. Still no goals with three minutes left in the contest. Hiroyuki Abe made the best of a very crowded penalty box, releasing Gabriel Xavier, but his shot into the side netting. And just when you thought it was going to end nil-nil, a defensive error one minute into time added on for stoppages allowed Xavier to play in Mateus and Nagoya come away with the home win. Time to catch a breather on the J1 League goal zone, but it's Olunga versus Iniesta when we return. Nothing says football quite like the best league in Asia. Japan's top flight served up warm right here for you on the J1 League goal zone show. A resurgent Kobe had scored 12 times in their previous four wins with Andres Iniesta leading the charge. The home side wouldn't be daunted though, they had Michael Alunga, a man responsible for half of Kashiwa's total goals. It was Iniesta though who had the first big chance of the game, 10 minutes in, left-footed strike and Kim seung gyu gets a big left paw to that one. On the quarter hour mark, Iniesta with the corner that missed everyone at the near post, Yuta Goke with the header, but Kim saving with his feet. And you just can't afford to be wasteful with Alunga around. As the ball was played into the penalty box in the 28th minute, he stooped to conquer, and that's 1-0 to Kashiwa. You can't keep a good man down though. Iniesta with a dribbling run, his shot though coming back off the foot of the post. But just three minutes later, Naoki Kawaguchi broke down the right-hand side. His centre missed everyone at the near post. Ataro Esaka was waiting, and that's 2-0. Five minutes later, Yuta Kamiya broke down the left-hand side. Alunga was hanging back, meaning Kamiya had to shoot. Saved by the keeper, but Alunga's there for the rebound, and that's goal number 21 of the season. Fifty-two minutes in and Isaka is involved again. Outside the penalty area, his left-footed shot makes it 4-0 in a one-sided contest. Or was it? On the hour mark, suddenly Vissel Kobe found their scoring boots. Iniesta involved again, Junya Tanaka on hand to make it 4-1. And Iniesta would be pivotal again, finding Gotoku Sakai, who crosses the ball for Tanaka once more, his second goal in 15 minutes. Three minutes from time and yet more hope for Vissel Kobe, Douglas slashing down Tayo Koga. And guess who stepped up from the spot? Iniesta makes it 4-3. But it would all be too little too late. Even a 94th minute red card for Shunki Takahashi couldn't stop the Kashiwa victory. 
Kashima needed to pull themselves out of a rut. With no points and no goals from their last two, they were up against the visiting Yokohama side, who were on a string of losses themselves. Still inside only the second minute, a free kick for Yokohama has everybody stretching, including Yuji Sanuma, who makes it 1-0. And Yokohama would be 2-0 up just 11 minutes later. Yusuke Matsuo side-footing this one along the ground from the edge of the box. Eight minutes from the break, five Yokohama players gathered inside the penalty area for the free kick. They all split up and Maguinho heads the ball onto the woodwork. 2-0 at half-time. Two minutes from the hour and the Antlers would start to make a game of this one. Nice back heel from Kento Misao. Juan Alano's ball in finds Everaldo and it's 2-1. Yokohama would hold on to their lead until the 88th minute when a very unfortunate Mazakatsu Tashiro would head the ball into his own net 2-2. And in the 92nd minute, that misfortune would turn into a horror story. Kei Koizumi turning the ball home, sparking sensational scenes. The other Yokohama club played host to Oita, and they'd be looking for their league MVP of September, Eric, to do some damage in front of the visitors' goal. Ollie Hogburn with your commentary. That's Sabala with a quick throw and a good one as well to Junior Santos. Well saved at the near post from Mun Kyunggun. Great throw though from Ken Matsubara. Very accurate delivery to the Brazilian. Looking for his eighth goal in J1 this season. Junior Santos tries to counter, has the pace to do so, and the strength, and the footwork. Really good play, this is super. Etaru Matsuda, can he create a shooting chance? Just goes over. Still yet to score for the Marinos, but that was all made by Junior Santos. it on Bumatan, that's more like it, a good delivery. And then the shot has gone in from distance, that caught everyone out. The Yokohama F. Marinos have taken the lead in the 55th minute. Tomohiro Katanosaka's team finally beaten by Ken Matsubara's first goal of the season. Great reaction from Ken Matsubara. And he just looped that over the top of Naoki Nomura. It's a very good goal. Matsubara, clever ball to Etaro Matsuda. Went for the early cross, but it was uh, way too early. Short ball, too short. Junior Santos. Oh, it's a lovely goal. They gave the ball away, and for the man whose birthday it is tomorrow, that one was gift-wrapped. The Yokohama F. Marinos 2, Oita Trinita nil. a super finish from Junior Santos for his eighth goal of the season. Adonai providing the assist, but that was a little bit of magic from Junior Santos. What a... On to uh, Kota Mizunuma, the substitute, to the other substitute, Eric. He can certainly shoot from there, and he does shoot from there, and he scores from there. Coming on as a substitute and scoring his 10th goal of the season, Eric makes it the Malinos 3, Trinita nil, And it's now turning into a comfortable performance from the home side. Straight to the legs of Tomoki Iwata. And beating Moon Kyung Gun, who left a little bit of a gap perhaps. But it was a very fine finish from the 25 year old. Well, a game really marked by three very good finishes. One of them by this man, Eric. Can he do it again? He can do it again. And you cannot say they were not warned because it's a very similar goal and it's 4 0. And the man who scored eight goals in September 
is having a splendid October too. Another lovely low finish from the Brazilian. And yet again through the legs of a defender, this time Yoshinori Suzuki. It was Tomoki Iwata the first time. And again, Mun Kyung Gun beaten at the near post. Oh, it's turning into a horrible day for Oita Trinita. The Yokohama F. Marinos have got one of the most devastating attacks. Just too strong, just too exciting, just too full of flair. The Yokohama F. Marinos defeat a disciplined Oita Trinita team who eventually were overpowered and lose by four goals to nil here at the NHK Spring Mitsuzawa Football Stadium. On the prowl for their ninth straight win, Kawasaki should have had no problems dishing out the hurt when Vergelta came to the Todoroki Stadium. Things started well for Kawasaki, Kaoru Mitoba finding the ball on the left-hand side of the penalty area, his shot though blocked in the six-yard box. Six minutes later and they were denied again. Yuko Bayashi meeting the through ball, slow it saves and then the follow-up comes back off the post. Slowick was having a good day, this time diving away to his right and getting a palm on Kobayashi's shot once again. Third time lucky for Kobayashi though, two minutes later this ball getting through Slowick and over the line. Slowick's big hand wasn't needed in the second half. Kengo Nakamura's free kick in the 51st minute, crashing back off the crossbar. And the woodwork would deny Kawasaki once again. Kobayashi from three yards out. And the frame of the goal would feature once more. Vagalta looking for an equaliser with 10 minutes left. Shun Nagasawa heading the ball down, but seeing the ball come back into play. We'll wrap things up in Kyushu. Sagan, smarting from two consecutive losses, took to the pitch against the Reds, who were also in the red, having lost three on the trot. Not much action until three minutes from the break when Takahiro Sakine smashed that one left-footed against the apex. Into the second half then, and eventually Daichi Hayashi was wrestled to the deck by Takiya Iwanami. Penalty kick. Hayashi brushed himself down to take the spot kick, but Shusaku Nishikawa got a fingertip to that, and it came back off the post. 75th minute, and Sagan players queuing up at the edge of the box for this one. It fell to Ryoya Morishita, gathered though by Nishikawa in goal. Still no goals then in the 93rd minute, Martinus finds Koya Yuruki who brushes off the attention of two defenders. They steal the points for a valuable away win. Sapporo came from a goal down to secure their first win in 10 games, but there was no such luck for Shimizu losing 3-2 at home to San Frecce. Nagoya snatched a late three points at home and Kashiwa held on for the win after a seven-goal thriller with Kobe. Yokohama fell to a late goal at Kashima, while local rivals Marinos were convincing in their 4-0 thumping of Oita. The Kawasaki train has pulled out of the station, putting more daylight between them and the rest of the league. Frontale have now opened up a 15-point gap over second place Tokyo. Cerezo sputtering once again in their quest with no points again this round. Gamba once more with a crucial win, they move up a spot into fourth on 41 points. A long-awaited win for Consodole takes them into 13th, while more misery piles on for Shimizu, collecting their 16th loss of the season. They continue to have Shonan for company as the two teams linger at the foot of the table. Another round in the bag then and that wraps up this edition of the J1 League Goalzone Show. My name's Steve Dawson and we'll see you next time.